Hello, everyone, and thanks for spending some time with us to hear about what best-in-class companies are doing to compete and win on customer experience marketing in real time. What we want to share with you today is the information that we've gathered by interviewing over 100 plus customer experience professionals in the last 12 months and then surveying another 400 plus more. And, and here's what they've told us. First, their goals to prof is to profitably attract and retain customers at scale. That really hasn't changed. They want to not only attract and retain customers, but they all want to improve the overall customer satisfaction. Additionally, they want to do this from a profitability standpoint that's beneficial to the brand. As a matter of fact, what we found is, is that when brands make a commitment to real-time customer experience marketing, their overall marketing costs go down as opposed to up. And the last piece is, is that most marketers now want to measure more KPIs, especially around customer engagement, to make sure they're doing the right thing for their customer and keeping them engaged with the brand and also then moving them to improving the overall lifetime value of that relationship. Now, here's what some marketers told us explicitly around customer journey. They said the customer journey options now are infinite. They're non-linear and you have to think about it that way. Uh, unfortunately, marketing budgets are not infinite or non-linear. And so matching up the two to be successful uh, is tough. And it's something that marketers who have done a good job in competing on customer experience uh, have figured out. The second thing they told us is that customer behavior is predictive. It's actually more predictive now than it's ever been with machine learning. However, most marketers are still using a persona-based approach to segmentation. What Best in Class have told us is that's appropriate for content, but not necessarily for competing and winning on customer experience in real time. Additionally, the best have told us that customers want to have conversations. And as hard as everyone tries, campaigns do not make a conversation. So what their focus is on is understanding what touch point the customer is on, as well as where they are on their buying journey to understand what content should be returned to that customer in the moment. To do all this, the best got started with three simple, simple principles. First, they committed to owning their own data. And what that means is they wanted to have full access to all the data online and offline associated with their audiences and customers, whether that was in the first party, second party, or third party. The second thing they wanted to do was own the decisioning. And they wanted to own it on two dimensions. First, business intelligence. And second, creating insight for real-time segment and content decisions that optimize the customer experience. The third thing they wanted to do was own the delivery. They wanted to be able to deliver personalized, real-time content at each journey touchpoint to attract, retain, and continue to unlock value from every customer. What I'm going to do now is turn it over to my colleague, David Chan, who's going to share with you when this is done well, how the customer feels about your brand and what they do. David? Thanks, John. Best-in-class marketers knew their customers, but in a way that makes a difference. Our studies show that on average, there are 28 data sources that are used for generating customer insights and customer engagement. Now, 28 may sound like a lot, to put it in perspective, there are over 7,000 marketing technologies available today. And it really goes to show how complex the technology landscape really is and all the data that's actually being generated. One of the most common challenges companies have is the ability to integrate multiple data sets into a unified profile. And this unified profile is also commonly referred to as the golden record or the customer 360. The struggle is real when you're trying to blend offline data with a digital identity. In our experience, it's really, really hard. And we found that 80% of the data a company collects is typically digital data. And the other 20% is offline data. Yet, 80% of the value actually lies in the company's unique offline data set. And if a company is able to solve these data challenges, this unified profile allows companies to understand 
and connect with their customers at a much deeper and resident level. Best-in-class marketers were also able to use AI to deliver relevant content. There are so many different applications for AI machine learning these days, but one of the easiest applications in our experience is content decisioning. I don't think it should be a surprise to anybody that our studies show customers increasingly expect relevant and personalized information. Who doesn't? What is surprising though, is the fragmented way some companies plan to tackle the problem. Classic marketers would perform segmentation analysis and then try to produce content for each segment. Then marketers would go into the tool and try to configure segments to content. But what we see as a common problem is scale. Over time, as marketers try to execute more volume of personalized campaigns, they ultimately become more complex in nature, which then means that it takes longer to perform the segmentation analysis and then more time to produce the various types of content and then more time to configure the tools and so forth. You get the picture. A lot of companies will try to throw warm bodies at the problem, but, but at a certain point, that doesn't fix the issue. So then companies will turn to automation and business rules. But even then, in our opinion, it's only a half measure because configured business rules tend to be flaky. These rules are typically set up manually in each individual marketing tool. And over time, if you just have a couple of marketing tools, it might be okay, but as more tools get added, they tend to compete and possibly contradict the rules set up in other tools. And so the management of all those rules across desperate technologies become a little bit overwhelming for most organizations. That's where AI and machine learning come into play. Best in class marketers leverage AI to optimize on business outcomes. This allows marketers to focus on building amazing content and then letting the machine choose who to best serve that content to in order to provide the maximum value. Best in class marketers could also talk to their customers the same way, regardless of touch point. There are more engagement channels than ever to connect with your customers. Our studies show that on average, there are 17 technology applications leveraging customer data. And this is great, right? This is great for companies who are looking to increase engagement, but unless each interaction is given the respect it deserves, it can easily turn into a tone deaf inter interaction that actually drives your customer farther away from the brand. We know, and you know, that customers only see the brand and, do and don't necessarily understand that there might be different teams supporting each engagement channel, which is why some messages can somewhat just feel disconnected. This is where orchestration tools can come to help coordinate and play air traffic control to determine the right frequency, cadence, and velocity to commun communicate to customers across channels. Getting this right allows companies to create a more consistent and frictionless experience regardless of the touch point. And best-in-class marketers ultimately built a customer engagement system to win and compete on customer experience. And they had to make a strategic choice up front. Are they going to buy, rent, or build these capabilities? But regardless of the choice they ended up with, they always wanted to own. They wanted to own the data, they wanted to own the decisioning, and they wanted to own the delivery. They understood that their first party data was a uniquely differentiating asset compared to their peers. They knew if they could connect data sources across advertising, marketing, sales, and service in a meaningful way, and then organize it so it can be distributed and federated and made accessible to teams and applications, it could truly be a start 
to monetizing their data and treating it as an asset rather than a liability. And all of this had to be done in real time. So though a lot of data management might have been outsourced to third parties, best-in-class marketers made a decision to in-house this critical asset in order to take back control. And they started by designing a unified data model, purpose-built for customer experience and engagement. They didn't try to design something that included all data, but focus on the data sets that were actually going to help drive a business decision. Best in class also understood that there were siloed teams who were not used to collaborating with each other, which meant that even the data might have different definitions. Conversion in one for one team might mean something different for another, which is why unifying the data also meant designing a unified taxonomy and a common data dictionary, which acted as a universal translation layer that allowed teams and technologies to speak one common language. That was a critical step. Then once they got the data right, they knew decisioning was the next logical step because it focused on three key, key use cases. Number one, business intelligence, what happened in the past? Number two, data science, what do we think will happen in the future? And number three, content optimization, what content works the best? Because they knew if you could truly anticipate your customer's needs and be fully prepared to meet those needs in a moment that matters, that would truly be an excellent experience. And the most common challenge we see is actually defining KPIs or what we like to call them CPIs, customer performance indicators. Data had been in silos for so long that once all the data has converged under one roof, uh, it's, it's interesting, but organizations don't actually know what to do next. It's almost information overload and becomes paralysis by analysis. This is where it's important to have a champion in the company who understands the challenge and knows how to navigate this. Best-in-class marketers knew how to workshop KPIs with their constituents to understand what information they need to do their jobs better. This typically led to three outcomes. Number one, you have the data and you can generate the KPI. Number two, you have a gap to generate the KPI, but you have a plan to address that gap. Number three, you have a gap to generate that KPI and there's no clear plan to address. But irrespective of, of those three outcomes, a nice byproduct of this exercise is that it, you get to socialize the art of the possible of this new robust data set, and you can show your company how you can start moving from business rule driven campaigns to more complex journey based campaigns. And the best also knew that decisioning only got them so far. And to truly win, you needed to automate the decisioning in a way that you could activate customers and prospects in real time, immediately when the decision is made. The delivery platform is the last mile and where most companies fall short due to clunky hang handoffs between internal teams or external partners. By leveraging an orchestration tool that takes advantage of a ubiquitous decisioning engine that is abstracted from the individual tools themselves and place the layer above, it allows for true coordinated delivery of messages and content so that a real dialogue can emerge between the brand and the customer. Several companies have started to automate some of these three pillars, but only the best have automated this end to end. If done right, it gives companies a low latency solution that actually makes real-time marketing a reality. The biggest roadblock, in our opinion, is actually the operating model, governance, and change management required to pull this all together. A lot of times we hear that the company didn't move forward with a best-in-breed technology because, ironically, introducing this new, better technology created 
more work and complexity for the team. But upon closer inspection, it turns out it was because their plan was to merely shoehorn in a new technology to existing processes versus reimagining what it could look like if you really wanted to be a data-driven company and you wanted to be a leader in real-time marketing. Best-in-class marketers understood that digitally transforming your technology architecture also meant transforming your business architecture. And if you do this right, it allows companies to have a relationship with each customer that is essentially an ongoing conversation along that connected journey that allows them to comprehend the individual and provide them a hyper-personalized experience in the moment, regardless of the touch point that they came in. Adobe Experience Platform enables not just the Adobe Experience Cloud, but it's also designed to be open and extensible to work with all MarTech. With 7,000 marketing technologies out there and growing, the term full stack honestly doesn't quite hold the same meaning as it once did. And technologies like AEP are designed with that in mind. AEP is also designed in a way where Adobe has separated their architecture into three layers. You have, starting from the bottom, a platform layer, which is essentially a data layer. You have a app services layer that sits on top of that, and that includes real-time CDP, journey orchestration, customer journey analytics, offer management, and also houses some of the Sensei AI services capabilities. And then the top layer is the application layer. So that's where all the marketing clouds sit, whether it's Adobe or a third party. This construct aligns with what we believe as a best practice, because John and I often to, uh, see applications fail to work properly because of the data. By separating this, it actually allows the applications to focus on delivering great customer experiences, while AEP can enable those applications by feeding it high quality data. And when done right, good things can happen. Competing on CX pays off. We've worked with multiple companies who decided to take this journey and was able to see incredible results across the lead to loyalty spectrum. We've seen huge improvements in getting the right prospects and audiences to your site more qualified. We've seen huge revenue gains simply by using AI to help decide what offer to present in emails. And we've seen huge operational savings by taking some of the activities in-house. We believe your company can also see the same type of results if you wanna take the same journey. This concludes our session. John and I would like to thank you for taking the time to listen to what best-in-class companies are doing around real-time customer experience marketing. We hope you enjoyed the session, and we're happy to connect if you're interested in learning more. Thank you again.